Hello again, everyone, across the state of Oklahoma. It's time for Oklahoma Sports Scene. I'm Chris Link, along with the coach, Gil Cloud, our TPS athletic yeah. director. Mm -hmm. And it's time for football, finally. Ready to kick it off, coach, for the college season. I'll tell you now. what, it was great on Saturday night to watch the Miami and the Florida game. That's right. And what a heck of a football oh game gosh. that was. And a lot of mistakes, a lot of penalties, As but you expect. it's early season. You know, and, and then the high school, we had previews all over the state of Oklahoma, actually. Exactly. And so uh, it's football season. Show lineup for you. Give you a quick rundown. Take a look at our show lineup. Philip Montgomery, the head football coach of the Golden Hurricane, had an interview with him on Media Day. We'll hear him talk about the first game, of course, of Michigan State coming up Friday night. High school football stars Michael Knight uh, did some really good work for us. Did interview a bunch of high school football players from across the state of Oklahoma. You're going to enjoy that. He's got them from uh, Plainview, a Union, Bishop Kelly, BTW, and Carl Albert. So we'll get a, a plethora across the state. Excellent. J.W. Kraft, the new owner of the Tulsa Roughnecks, will be here along with Mike Farmer, their general manager. Those are Christian athletes, great organization. One of your great friends, Chuck Bowman, Chris Kaiser, talk Chuck about Bowman, that. Chuck Bowman, yeah, great guys. Of course, Chris Kaiser is one of our boys from Union That's back right. in the day. And, and Chuck's been around uh, Oklahoma athletics for years and years and has done a wonderful job with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And Gene Barrett, a former TU and NFL uh, player, will be here to talk about the Big kickoff gala the NFL alumni have it again supports Tulsa Public Schools, Coach. They do. I tell you what, uh, Gene and his group, the, the retired NFL players, have done such a great job uh, in raising money uh, for those critical needs that we have uh, with our student athletes uh, and literally across the state. But uh, our schools have really benefited from that, and uh, we certainly are excited and looking forward to that uh, in September. A couple other notes. This is kind of surprising, Coach. Arkansas has finally decided yes, we'll come play football at the University of Tulsa. They've reached a new agreement there. Tulsa's gonna to go to Fayetteville twice, 2026 and 29. Hurricane, the Razorbacks will host the Hurricane on 26 and 29. They will come here in 2027. First time in 75 years they've come to Tulsa to play the Razorbacks. Uh, monumental having Arkansas come to Tulsa. It is, yeah. Uh, but also monumental, the home and home with Oklahoma State. Exactly. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think the fans in Tulsa better better really realize what, what they're going to have here in the future as far as uh, what may be coming to Chapman Stadium. Also like the fact that OSU announced that they are going to uh, also be playing Arkansas regional schedule 2024, 27, 32, and 33. First meeting since 1980 between the Cowboys and the Razorbacks. NFL preseason notes, I guess the big talk, of course, is that shocking uh, retirement by the Indianapolis Colts quarterback. Unbelievable. Andrew Luck shocked the NFL two weeks before the season started by saying, I'm done. I'm through it. Just too much pain, coach. Well, you know, and I, uh, th there was a lot of criticism uh, that he got. If you yeah. saw social media, they and were the all over the place. Him. Yeah, they fans yeah. booed him and everything. I, I, unless you've been injured and you've had to go through rehab. Yeah. We know about that. Yeah, we about do. The rehab. Right. <laughs> but to have that injury and know that you're at a certain age and, and you may never get over that kind of pain and you're only 29 years old yeah. you know yeah. gosh uh, leave the guy alone let him go and retire sure. and, and enjoy his life nfl season 100th season will be kicking off that's coming up on september 5th and the big game is green bay at chicago to uh the originals will be playing in the 100th start Open of the season up. for the nfl well what a what a weekend for golf Rory McIlroy cashed a check for fifteen <laughs> million dollars yeah. winning the FedEx Cup. And amazing to me, Coach, the purse was forty-five million dollars. And think about this: the first eight places got over a million dollars, and last place, number thirty, a check for four hundred thousand. Just for showing up. Woo. I mean, that's How a good participation that, huh? fee, isn't it? Four hundred thousand. Huh? <laughs> My gosh! But it was great golf, yeah. and I tell you, it, it, the lead there in the last nine holes changed back and forth yes, so. double yeah. bogeys yeah. here hit it in the yeah. water there but uh you know what a what a and i think pga has gotten it right on making the end of golf season yeah, where they are job. and everything yeah. i really believe they have well it was hyped as the biggest sporting event in the history of the <laughs> city of broken arrow it was called the rumble in the rose district it was held this past friday night eight professional fights the central park community center downtown there where they're forced to fight inside for what was going to be an outside arena and also kind of mess with uh, some other activities there. The feature was Oklahoma's own undefeated heavyweight uh, from Vanita, Trey Lippy Morrison. That was that was the schedule anyway. Didn't quite work out. A man Thomas Walking Stick was there though and had a chance to talk to Trey Morrison about why he couldn't fight in the feature. You know, I, I haven't fought here yet. I want to do it and I want to give all these people what they want to see. You know, and that's uh, me fighting and I 
I'd love to uh, give them, you know, what they came here for. Even though they couldn't get it tonight, I'd love to repay them for coming out here, and hopefully I can do that another day. Broken Arrow is his backyard. saw that chin, man, I had to get it. I had to get it. He got a little wild slapping inside. I knew that if I closed the distance, he wouldn't be able to, he wouldn't be able to use his, his reach and keep me outside. So I felt him out and I landed a good punch overhand right and he went to sleep. Man, this crowd was super crazy and super supportive, man. As soon as they said I was from Oklahoma City, the whole crowd erupted. And I Good luck to Trey Morris in the future. Hoping you can find somebody to fight, Coach. That was right. tough. That's Golly. pretty tough when you can't find anybody to fight. Unbelievable. 16 and 0. That a heck of a job, this young heavyweight. Tell us the drillers. They're doing quite a job, Coach. They're closing in on that second half championship. You know, they are, and uh, they kind of did that last year where they had yeah. that run toward the end. Right. Uh, and I think uh, the, the manager does a great job with that, you know, motivating those young players and getting them to focus on not necessarily their careers, but the team right. effort. And as, as we started the week, uh, the. Uh, Drillers had a two-game lead, uh, two-game lead on Arkansas in the, uh, the division and the North Division for the second-half title, and they now finish with games on the road. They're August 26th to 29th at Amarillo. Regular season ends August 30th, September 2nd at Corpus Christi. Then hopefully Texas League playoffs. Tulsa Roughnecks have a couple of home matches coming up. Uh, uh, August 28th they'll host the Las Vegas Lights. August 31st Fresno. Uh, Club there will be coming into town. We'll talk a lot more about that with our Roughneck guests coming up later in the show. Coming up next, though, TU Football head coach Philip Montgomery talks about the Golden Hurricane ready to kick off 2019 season. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. All right, y'all, how's everything tasting? Yeah, that is awesome. I come bearing gifts of the liquid variety. Bricktown Brewery, come and get it. Whether it's a wedding, birthday, family reunion, or company event, give your next big event a unique country feel at our Red Barn Event Center located just north of Tulsa. We feature plenty of party room inside and out for up to 350 guests, a huge open floor space, and even a big stage. The Red Barn features a full kitchen and separate bride and groom dressing areas. Outside weddings are beautiful under our 100-year-old pecan tree. For your next big event, for the do-it-yourself wedding, the Red Barn Event Center is the perfect choice. Booking now for future events. showroom when I left yesterday. Uh, no, sorry, Jen. I haven't seen it. Are you positive you haven't seen it? Hey, Mo, I went ahead and pulled the MDX back up on the showroom for it. Oh, hey, Jen. Haven't seen it, huh? The first of our big four football teams in Oklahoma kicks off Friday night. University of Tulsa, 6 p.m. at Michigan State, taking on the Big Ten Power Spartans. Now, before the team left East Lansing, Michigan, we had a chance to sit down with head football coach, the Golden Hurricane, Philip Montgomery, to talk about the 2019 season. Yeah, we really are excited. We've, we've had a couple of weeks now, fall camp, got a couple more before we get to our first game, but 
Uh, this team has really come and, and accepted the challenge, and we've been talking about earning it since January, and these guys are trying to earn it each and every day. Talked about uh, goals for the season. I thought one of the most interesting goals is no more injuries. No, stop <laughs> please, the injuries. Please, please. That was unbelievable. What was it last year? What, 13 knees, 7 ACLs? Yeah. And, and then uh, you tore your bicep. <laughs> I even I even got injured, <laughs> which is crazy. Yeah, so, you, coach. You know, we, we've, we've fought that the last couple of years, but uh, these guys – have done a good job of taking care of each other during fall camp. Um, you know, hopefully we're, we're living right and doing right, and, and the good Lord's going to give us a chance to stay healthy throughout the year. Uh, but uh, our strength staff's done an incredible job of getting guys back and getting them ready to go, and, and uh, right now those guys are flying around. Let's talk about the challenge of this schedule. It's always a challenging schedule. My gosh, to start with Big Ten Power, Michigan State, go all the way to California, San Jose State, then come here and oh, only open the home season with Oklahoma State. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, a, it's a very, very challenging schedule. That's just the preseason you're talking yeah, about. And right. then as that, we get yeah. into our conference, you know, just at home, you've got Navy, you got Memphis, you got Central Florida, um, Houston, all of those are coming to town. Yeah. And, and obviously we need your help. Y'all come out um, and be loud and be cheering <laughs> and all of those things. But it's a challenging schedule, but I think our guys understand the mentality that we have to have. We got to take it one week at a time um, and understand it's about us. It's not about who we're playing. We get in between the white lines. We got to take care of business. Yeah, I've covered TU football for many years, Coach. And I don't remember, remember talking about the strength of a University of Tulsa football team being the defense, and it really is a lot of what, nine, start, nine starters back? Got nine starters back, and really I feel like we have more than that. We, you know, we've had a couple of guys that were starters that, that got injured and other guys stepped in. Uh, we've had guys from a depth standpoint. I don't know if our depth has been as solid as it has been right now. So I think we can rotate and move some guys in and out, keep them fresh. Uh, I love what we're doing schematically, defensively. Our personnel, it really fits into that scheme. And guys, you know, we made drastic improvements last year from a, from a stat standpoint. Um, but I can see us continuing to take steps, and I'm excited to see what this defense is going to be about. I remember you said you feel we may have the best linebacking core in the entire American Athletic Conference. Well, I really feel like we, we've got a chance to. I mean, Cooper's now going into being a three-year starter. He's had over 100 tackles every year that he's been a starter. Uh, you look at Zavin, who ended up starting game three or four right. last year and then continued that starting role for the rest of the season. Just the progression that he made during the season at that spot, now a year underneath his belt, another offseason underneath his belt. Uh, those two guys are going to lead the charge. And then Diamond Cannon has had a tremendous career here. Wow. But really, I think from the spring until now, has really stepped his game up, and I think he's going to have a great year. People think of the University of Tulsa, and historically too, Coach, and this is your part of the game too, quarterbacks and offense. And mm -hmm. this has always been an offensive school. How do we turn things around on that side of the ball? Yeah, we just got to be more consistent. You know, we got to get back to being able to throw the ball consistently, doing those things, open the field back up. You know, our quarterbacks, the, the last two years, they've all been pretty young. They've been redshirt freshmen. You go through some growing pains with those those kids, but as you look at Seth and his progression up to this point, I think he has taken some dramatic steps. We've got Zach Smith who transferred in, who had to sit out last year, who's got some experience underneath his belt, but a guy with a tremendous arm and has showed some great things in fall camp and spring ball. And then Davis Brent, who's continuing to come on as a young kid. So. I feel really good about our quarterback room and the progression that we're making. Now we just got to go out and do it when it matters the most. And this is Tulsa's team. It's a great home schedule. We need those fans to come out. We really do. We need your help, uh, you know, coming out and supporting us, giving us that home field advantage, uh, bring excitement to it. We're going to provide excitement for you. We've got a great home slate. Um, let's make sure that we're out in our blue supporting, being loud. I want to see more blue in the stands in our first than I want to see orange. So let's make sure we see more blue. Well, good luck to Coach Montgomery going up to East Lansing. That's going to be a heck of a trip. Uh, but, you know, if they can get through it without injuries, they got a chance. Then they go to San Jose State. Then you heard him talk about coming back home, the home opener against Oklahoma State. And he got the challenge for the fans. Let's have more blue than orange. Well, I think we need to do that uh, here. It's our home game. That's right. And, uh, you know, of course, it's going to sell out. Yep. So you better get your tickets now. Oklahoma State, of course, has an incredible alumni base here. The coach, you know, the orange will be out there for sure. Absolutely, and of course, it'll be a great evening for all those businesses and everything around. It's great economic development, and uh, we certainly hope the hurricane can be successful. High school football time, and our good friend Michael Knight 
has done a heck of a job interviewing some uh, high school football players from across the state of Oklahoma. That's coming up next on Oklahoma Sports Scene. Service is amazing. Food's delicious. I love the avocado fries. I love the energy. <laughs> <laughs> Local beer. Great food. Truly friendly service. You look alright for you. Bricktown Brewery. Come and get it. Cowboy football is way more than just Cowboy football. This is who we are. We come to Boone Picking Stadium as many, but in this sea of orange, we stand as one. And we all know what it looks like. The crowd roaring, arms waving, and bullet flying. It's the paddles popping, the shotgun firing, and the fans rocking. It's our passion, our heart, our family, and our team. Because at Oklahoma State, it's who we are. Each week we talk about the GTR, and we know for a fact that Forrest Cameron and his wife Sharon put out a tremendous paper. Well, I brought all six of them today. I'd like for you to see them. The Union Bound Dairy, and here is the Owasso Rambler. And if you live in Bixby, how about the Bixby Breeze, or Broken Era, the Broken Era Express, Jinx, District Gazette, and then of course the Tulsa Midtown. All of those, the GTR. If you haven't had an opportunity to read one, do it, and you'll be proud of it. Welcome back to Oklahoma Sports Scene here at Bricktown on 33rd in Peoria. And now it's high school football talk. Michael Knight has some very in-depth interviews with some of our prep stars across the state of Oklahoma. Thanks, guys. We did have the opportunity to host our fourth annual OK Preps Media Days right here in the Peak One Studios, and we got to talk with some of the best athletes all across Oklahoma. But afterwards, we also got to witness a commitment from an Oklahoma sports scene guest from last week's show. Edison running back Savion Morrison committed to the Nebraska Cornhuskers, and we sat down with Savion afterwards, and he told us on why he chose Nebraska. Number one thing is, like I said, they keep it so real. That's the number one thing I like that stood out about them. Second thing is, uh, the, the, the play time I get my freshman year if I come put in the work, and the offense, I love the offense. So talk about the connection with Ryan Held, uh, the, the assistant coach there. He's coaching running backs, right? Yes, sir. He obviously has uh, deep connections to the state of Oklahoma. Talk about your relationship with him and how I'm, I'm, sh I'm assuming that had a huge impact on your eventual decision. Yes, sir. He, uh, like I said, he's a heck of a guy, man. We, we become close since my first offer, since they offered me. He just really, it's like a friend. I mean, I, at the end of the day, that's my positions coach, but the relationship we have is so real. It's like a friendship. Sevion and the Edison Eagles will be one of the top teams in Class 5A, but they'll be chasing Carl Albert. They're the three-time defending state champions and have won 36 consecutive games. Their starting quarterback is Ben Harris, who's going into his junior season, and he's a perfect 28-0 as the Titan signal caller. We went back to last year with Ben in our sit-down conversation with him and talked about the journey to the three-peat. You know, you know, they say everything happens for a reason. You know, I feel like we put in a lot of hard work in the summer in the off season, winter time, and then practices. I mean, I don't remember a bad, pra I mean, I remember a couple bad practices we have, but we didn't have that many. And you know, that carried into games and we just, after we won, we celebrated. And then as soon as midnight hit that night, we were on to the next game. Because on the outside looking in, Carl Albert's one of the top programs in the state without a doubt. 36 straight wins, three straight state championships. I've talked to a lot of you guys. You don't talk about any of that. And where does that, where does that approach come from where you're able to, like you mentioned, at midnight, it's, it's a new day. We're yep. not talking about yesterday. Uh, I, Coach Corley, you know, he preaches to us, like, don't dwell on the past. You know, we got to work now. I mean, because we just got, you know, we got to work for that next game. And we're just one step closer, one week at a time. Got to go 1-0. and It's no secret by now that Booker T. Washington is one of the top programs in the state of Oklahoma when it comes to producing some of the top recruits in Oklahoma. 
The latest is wide receiver J.J. Hester, who is one of the top prospects available, still uncommitted, in Oklahoma's 2020 class. We talked with J.J. about how he witnessed some of the previous top recruits, like a Dax Hill or a D.J. Jones, and how he witnessed what they went through with the recruiting process. Really, I just like step back and watch them and like just see how they took it. And I just best like took notes from them and just doing what I'm doing right now. Now, when it comes to, to on the football field, let's go back to last year and let's, let's talk about 2018. Uh, coming into the season as defending champs, uh, things obviously didn't end the way you would want. Kind of snake bit injuries here and there. Uh, to, to not only uh, you know, some of the skill guys, but some of the key guys that you need to contend for a title. Uh, how has this offseason been different for you guys when you're preparing for this fall compared to last year coming off of a championship? Um, this year, you know, we're definitely more focused. Um, last year, we probably could have got a little complacent. Um, but, you know, we're the underdogs this year. So we're just trying to get back to the top, and we've been working, like, really hard. Uh, everybody's been getting pushed, so I'm just glad to get back on the season. Bishop Kelly has high expectations going into the 2019 season, and why shouldn't they? They returned nearly everybody off of last year's team that made it to the 5A semifinals, and we sat down with Zach Middleton, a senior commit to Oklahoma State University, to talk about what this team has to do to make it to the state title. Limitless, that's what I think. I mean, we can... It's really just like whenever we click, that's the that's the major thing, you know, because we could either click week one right away or we could click week nine, week ten. But I think as long as we click before the playoffs, we can make it to the championship. How do you guys go and attack all of that in Class 5A and try to take what would be that next step going from a, a playoff team to a contender to the ultimate goal, which is raising a goal ball? Yes, sir. What has to happen? Um, consistency. We just got to be consistent every game and, you know, we got to fight every game and not whenever someone, you know, we got to, if we get knocked down, we got to get right back up and we can't let something hold us, you know, like when we're playing a team, if they score on us, we can't just, you know, get down on ourselves. We got to keep going no matter what the score is. We go from one OSU commit to another as Plainview offensive lineman Eli Russ was the first commit to Oklahoma State's 2020 class. Now Plainview fell short in the playoffs last year and Eli talks about how they use that as motivation going into this season. You know it was one of those deals we uh, we knew after that game that we had the potential to go to the state that year and uh, losing that game I think it helped us a lot this offseason just on the fact that we were lurk we worked a lot harder. We uh, this we have a big class this year and I think everybody in our class understands that this is our last year, this is the last time we're gonna be able to play together. And uh, it just really, it's boosted our confidence a lot more than uh, we, if we would have won that game, I guess you right. could say. Year in and year out, Union has expectations of winning the state championship in 6A1. Union wide receiver Kyler Pearson talks about last year's disappointment and heartbreak that they felt in the semifinals and a loss to Jinx in the final seconds. He talks about how they don't want this year to end the way last year did. Like we saw how all those seniors went out and um, how emotional it was for them because we came into that game and I feel like we did a pretty good job of what we were supposed to do to win that game. It just so happened that it didn't work out for us. Like, right. But um, we just, we use that as motivation probably every day. None of us want to go out like that again, so. For those complete interviews and many more from athletes and coaches all across the state of Oklahoma, be sure to check out okpreps.com. Also check out okpreps.com throughout the football season as we'll have plenty of content from week zero all the way to the state championships. I'm Michael Knight reporting from the Peak One Studios. Let's go back to Bricktown Brewery to Gil and Chris. 368 high school football teams from 6A1 all the way to Class B getting ready to start the season. Special time in towns all over Oklahoma. You know, it is, uh, you know, that we, we start that zero week and yeah, we've talked about zero week. I well, zero that. week is this. What happened was when we had uneven districts right. where you had seven or five in your district rather than eight or six, sure. that left an open date for, for teams during the season where they right. couldn't play. Sure. Okay. So if we go zero week, they can find a game okay. in that week and then still yep. play right through the season, have an open date. As you talked about, Thursday the 29th, Tulsa Central against U.S. Grant. That's in Oklahoma City. 
Friday, uh, the 30th, uh, Tulsa McLean takes it as a victory. Hale versus Webster at Eastside Stadium. Saturday, August 31st, Booker T. Washington uh, versus North Little Rock in Benville, Arkansas. And Coach, I'm going to be down in Mansfield, Texas with the Union Redskins. We've got several of our teams going down to play some Texas teams. I think we have five Friday. teams that go, go down to Mansfield, play the five Mansfield schools. Yeah. They'll be looking forward they'll, to that, they'll too. they outstanding weekend yeah. for high school football. Hope you enjoyed Michael Knight and his... Uh, uh, features there and again you can go okay preps to see the entire interviews as well we come back new ownership of the Tulsa Roughnecks they're here to talk about it stay with us Winston tie or bow tie mmm good choice Sammy they're here good morning welcome to Don Come on, you guys. What did you think they were here for? Well? It's the Honda Summer Spectacular Sales Event going on now at Don Carlton Honda. The Eschbach 6E Ranch on 800 acres north of Tulsa invites you to know the benefits of miniature Herefords. The 6E has always been committed to providing the finest quality meats. Our hormone-free beef is always on grass, then grain-fed the last 90 days to that perfect mix of marbling and taste. We will deliver the animal to a USDA-inspected facility. All you have to do is pick up your vacuum-packed processed meat. Fill your freezer with the finest quality beef at the best price. We also specialize in registered miniature Herefords for breeding and show. Call the 6E Ranch today. At Bricktown Brewery, we're known for our famous original craft beers like Single String Stout and Bluesberry Ale. Did you know we also brew our own root beer at our Oklahoma City brew house? It's called Attaboy Root Beer, and you'll love it no matter what your age. Just ask for a Bricktown Kids menu with all the favorites for our guests 12 and under. Bricktown Brewery opens every day at 11 a.m. We're back at the Bricktown oh Restaurant with Loaded goodness. Nachos to start us off in this segment here. How about those, Coach, huh? Mm, mm, mm. Mm. That good. If you want a full meal, get a Loaded Nacho. Yeah, yeah, right there. It has, it's loaded, believe me. And with us right now is J.W. Kraft. He's the, part of the new ownership group with the Tulsa Roughnecks soccer team. J.W., congratulations. Welcome. All right, thanks to for Tulsa having me. Tulsa Roughnecks. I appreciate it. We're excited about this. We had you a bet. big announcement at the gathering place. Huge attendance there, along with, I well, it was really neat, too. Some of the original Roughnecks are back in the right. 70s and 80s. Really cool. Yeah. So Victor Moore, so my youngest brother, you know, Kyle, right. was the soccer player of the family. Come from a big sports family, um, but he was the one that played. And Victor Moreland was a big influence. And coached him and kind of made a call up to Notre Dame. Uh, made, a co made a call to the head right. coach up there and ultimately was able to play and win a national championship for him. Give us a bit of your family background, the Kraft family. You've always been very much involved in the city of Tulsa. Yeah, so, I mean, I... We moved here in 1980, um, been in the coal business, and my father has, uh, since that time. And so grew up here, went to you know, Bishop Kelly for high school, played basketball, uh, ended up going to Yale, uh, played basketball there as well. And then my family and I uh, came back here about 12 years ago. So we had, after college, had moved around uh, San Francisco and Dallas, and we came back to Tulsa 12 years ago. and. It's been, you know, it's come by quick. So. <laughs> well, it's got to be exciting to come back and be able to buy the local soccer team. Right. Uh, I know you, you haven't been it very long, but uh, there's probably an evaluation period of what you're going to do with the, uh, with the franchise, uh, what you're going to do with the facility and so on. What, what are your plans in that area? I think, you know, plan number one right now is kind of assessing the situation and really listening. So yeah. we, you know, launched, we've had kind of two or three different kind of focus group listening sessions, kind of paths going on right now. Um, we have, you know, one that we're working with a marketing agency on uh, and then a kind of a separate path, which is more, we just met with our supporters last Friday um, downtown for kind of a two, two and a half hour kind of town hall style mm -hmm. kind of listening session. So, you know, really want to keep those going. Uh, we'll probably continue to do those over the next several months and, you know, really use those as kind of our kind of guiding path to figure out, you know, where do we need to lean in? Um, what do we need to pull back on and so, so forth. J.W. Kraft, uh, one of the new owners, along with his brothers of the Tulsa Roughnecks. And J.W., I know right, right away at the press conference, everybody wanted to know, what about a soccer exclusive stadium i know it's in the future talk about that as a possible future plan 
it's something that we definitely would like to look at. I mean, we know that the soccer experience is, you know, cannot be rivaled in a soccer-specific stadium. Right. I mean, it just adds to the culture, the fandom, the game day experience, um, which is kind of a huge priority for us. So, you know, we will, uh, you know, there's been some pre-work done um, prior to us buying the team. Um, we'll continue to kind of build upon that. You know, the league itself is pushing you know, there are two main things they're looking for is broadcast and soccer specific stadiums. Right. So they're really pushing us hard on that. I think that was call number two that I got after we signed the deal. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the ink's not dry yet, but what about that soccer specific stadium? Yeah. You know? um, so something yeah. we'll continue to try and get. What, what, does the league have a, a, a lucrative or non lucrative TV contract? Uh, it's very early stages. Uh, um, it's, you know, there's some. Um, I can't really say too much about it because sure. I don't think they, right. but you know, to you know, they made the jump a couple of years ago uh, to kind of go behind the paywall. So they were prior to the you know, so they're on ESPN Plus now. Used to be on YouTube. So, but all of the you know, every game's broadcast on ESPN Plus. Okay. Just like a number of the kind of you know, kind of global soccer matches as well. Yeah. And the craft family certainly aware of uh, the great excitement for the sport of soccer. From youth up to clubs, a lot of a lot of great soccer in this Tulsa area. Yes, there are. So that's one of those groups is the that we're really trying to go out, and, you know, try and right. make sure we get in front of and talk to is a lot of the you know the whole youth organization. So I believe there's like 10,000 kids that play youth soccer here in the metro area. Um, so it's obviously you know I think the the opportunity to maintain a professional franchise here in the city. Right. For those kids to look up to, right. and ultimately, you know, have that vision of, hey, I might be able to go do that someday. Right. Yeah. I think that's very, very important. I think for, for the growth of soccer, uh, and now, you know, we have a, a, a culture change in Tulsa. Uh, I mean, we every uh, weekend uh, from December to August host on four different of our turf fields uh, the Hispanic soccer leagues, yeah. and they're full. They play from eight in the morning to eight at night every weekend. <laughs> So there, I think there's a lot of potential, you know, for those people uh, to come in and uh, with the youth soccer, it's amazing. Yeah. KW, we can't be more excited to have your family involved in this and being the owners of the Tulsa Roughnecks. and look forward to covering you folks and all the new changes and announcements to the with the Oklahoma sports scene. All right. Thanks for having me. And thank Appreciate you for the time. We have something for you here, we do. Not for, by the way. Your general and, manager. And of course, you got the big match yeah. on Saturday. So That's right. right. Wayne yeah, Frank, come out and see us Saturday That's night. right. Let's talk about That's that. Right. So we have uh, Fresno coming in August 31st. Another uh, uh, match. We've been on the road for a while. We're going to be, be home for change. It will be. We've got a uh, you know, match this week, and then we've got another kind of three to four week break. And then we kind of end the season with five games in a row. Nice. Uh, five yeah. weeks, you know, five games, one a week oh, um, yeah. to kind of finish the season at home. The new face of Roughneck Soccer, J.W. Craft and his brothers. We're excited to have them in Tulsa. Excited what the future looks like for our Tulsa Roughnecks. We're going to come right back here with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. You're going to enjoy this. Stay with us. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Alright, y'all. How's everything tasting? Yeah, that is awesome. I come bearing gifts of the liquid variety. Bricktown Brewery, come and get it. fans, football season is here. And the Golden Hurricane has one of the best home schedules in school history. Season tickets are on sale now or purchase our three-game mini plan. The plan includes in-state rival Oklahoma State, along with Navy on Military Appreciation Game and two-time defending league champion UCF, all for only $90. To get your tickets, call 918-631-GO-TO or visit TulsaHurricane.com forward slash tickets. Welcome back to Oklahoma Sports Scene here at 33rd Peoria, Bricktown Brewery. 
and we have two very special guests, the two longtime friends of mine, uh, Chris Kaiser, yes, sir. Our former Union football player Correct. back in the day, and Chuck Bowman, who coached in Tulsa and has been all over the state of Oklahoma. And these two guys are very instrumental in the growth of the fellowship of Christian athletes in the state of Oklahoma. Guys, welcome. I want to go first to the mission. Thanks to Chuck sending me the book on 60 years of FCA. The mission statement for the fellowship of Christian athletes, for those who aren't familiar with it, to present to coaches and athletes and all who may influence the challenge and adventure of receiving Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, serving Him in their relationships and in the fellowship of the church. I love the fact, Chuck, that this all began with you guys and with Eddie Sutton, some other friends of yours. Talk about how it all started in an FCA nationally. Well, a lot of people don't know that Oklahoma is the birthplace place of FCA. Uh, Bud Wilkinson introduced FCA to our football team in 1956, the spring of 1956. And Otto Graham, Doak Walker, and, and uh, Pepper Martin was the other guy from Warner, Oklahoma. But they came to our football dorm and spent uh, 20 minutes each of them sharing with us who they were and how important it was that we knew who we should be. And so Coach Wilkerson bought into that very soundly. That was the spring of 1956. In the fall of 1956, nine of us off that football team went to Estes Park, Colorado and attended the very first national FCA meeting. And there we heard Branch Rickey and we saw Doak Walker and Otto Graham again. And it was a, a, a changing time of my life in that I finally realized that uh, the time I was at Oklahoma, I was gonna have something really special to carry on in a coaching career that I wanted to have. And so I made a commitment up there in Estes Park that when my coaching days came, I was gonna have FCA, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, part of my coaching philosophy. And when we came to Tulsa, uh, we did that here for eight years in two different high schools. And as you mentioned, Eddie Sutton, uh, he and Patsy helped us take kids to Estes Park every summer. And we saw a lot of our young uh, athletes uh, come to know the Lord. And, and when they come in back into my life again, yeah, that's the most rewarding thing I've, I've experienced. Well, Chris, you're the area director of Northeast Oklahoma for Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Yes, sir. Give us some of your background, what brought you to the Lord at FCA, and uh, some of your activities, which I know include players love this the hot fall practice the water on the absolutely feet. that's been a tradition for many many years even before i came on staff i've served on staff as the area director for 27 years um I, I owe a lot to chuck myself i look back on how did i hear about fca for the first time how did i go to my first fca camp it was through chuck and his influence uh, Bill Blankenship was on staff when I was in ju uh, in junior high, and uh, anyway, just had an impact in, in, in my life as as a freshman in high school. I had a coach and a teacher that hosted FCA in their in their rooms. I went. Uh, it was Don Bailey and Janet Schaefer, and uh, owe them so much uh, credit because it, they had. I went for a few reasons: donuts and orange juice in the morning, uh, and then um, just. Uh, a coach that cared enough to uh, invite me and, and ask me to be a part of it. I had a, a teammate stand up, share his faith, and it changed me in such a way that I've never uh, had a chance. I've never gotten over it since. I, I gave my life to Christ. I'm a product of the ministry that I work for now. So, like I said, been on staff 27 years, serving in Northeast Oklahoma. I love what we do. I see it work every single day. We still have great favor. Uh, this is a very busy time of year. As football started and school started, uh, our phone rings off the hook. Can you come? Will you be a part of our program? Will you come uh, help us do this? So we have 110 schools that have FCA in Northeast Oklahoma and almost 500 uh, statewide. So it, it is a very uh, uh, flourishing ministry and it's a busy time of year. How has the growth been over the years? Has it continued to grow? Uh... It does continue to grow. Where we see it happening a lot is in the junior high area, sixth grade on up. Um, but you know our high schools are pretty strong and traditional and then we'll we, we continue to build on our the FCA program in the middle school uh, uh, You know in the middle school areas of our schools. So the watermelon feeds a long-standing tradition yes. We are the heroes when we show up <laughs> when we show up with this ice-cold watermelon yeah. uh, We get to serve that football team right that uh, it's been so hot this this uh, this August, but uh, it's it's a great opportunity to come serve those kids, serve, serve those coaches, and tell them about FCA. Sure. Chuck Bowen, you laid out in your book too, the FCA values, integrity, serving, 
teamwork, excellence. That's a great role model for any, any athlete, any student. I think uh, most kids today are no, no different than they were when I was a young guy. Uh, we're looking for role models. We're looking for somebody that uh, will flesh out what they, you know, uh, believe. And uh, it, it has been uh, a wonderful thing to see uh, FCA flourishing today. Uh, Betty and I were part of it for 31 years. And John O'Dell and his staff have just continued to uh, carry the ball and, and uh, set the bar high. And, and we're really pleased with what the FCA is doing today. Let's talk about your big event coming up, the FCA Golf Classic, September 23rd, Battle Creek Golf Club in Broken Arrow. Yes, yeah, so we're almost uh, getting ready to celebrate 40 years of this event. Uh, oh. If you remember John Roush, uh, one of yeah, the first sure. guys on staff here, started this golf event 40 some years ago and it's been happening ever since and we're excited that it continues today. Uh, it's our major fall fundraiser. Uh, it's something that's been going on for a long, long time. We have room for 34 teams. Uh, we've had 18 or 19 teams already sign up to be a part of it. We do it out at the uh, Battle Creek Golf Club. Uh, we have a morning flight and an afternoon flight and it's just a great tournament, a great fundraiser and a great fellowship time for lots of our corporate sponsors and a lot of our adults to be involved. How do they get in touch with you? And also, if they want to get MCA, come out to their school. The best way is you can go online. We have the OklahomaFCA.org website, OKFCA.org, O-R-G, and they can they can uh, find my contact information there. They can email me. They can, my cell phone's on there. It's 918-850-3095, text me and uh, I will send you information and, and uh, get right back to you. We have something for the coach here? Fantastic, we have something for both of them. That's right. Bricktown Brewery, guys, there on us. Man, I am a there lucky guy. Thanks, thank Chuck. You, Chuck. you bet. Chuck, thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, my Jump goodness. Chuck Edmund, it's awful nice here to thank join you. us. Absolute legend when it comes to coaching and the FCA. I gotta quickly say too, one of my all-time favorite, dear friend we lost, Steve Davis, mm -hmm. Oklahoma quarterback. Mm -hmm. He continues to celebrate his memory and. His uh, great work in the Christian Absolutely. faith as well. With a big event coming up October 2nd, a very special guest coming for his luncheon downtown Tulsa Double Tree. We have a great opportunity uh, to bring Coach Bill Self in from the University of Kansas. Wow. Uh, Ted Owens is our honorary chairman for that event. Wow. So we have two Kansas coaches. We're excited about that. And, and uh, it is going to be a great time together with Coach Self. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk more about that as it gets closer. Yes, sir. Chris, Chuck, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Thank you. very much. Great to see you, my friend. Take care, buddy. Thank you. Yes. Good to see you. Good job, buddy. Good okay. You. Thanks, Gil. We'll be back with Gene Barrett. Talked about the NFL alumni with a big event that's going to help benefit our Tulsa Public School athletic departments. At Bricktown Brewery, we're known for our famous original craft beers like Single String Stout and Bluesberry Ale. Did you know we also brew our own root beer at our Oklahoma City brew house? It's called Attaboy Root Beer, and you'll love it no matter what your age. Just ask for a Bricktown Kids menu with all the favorites for our guests 12 and under. Bricktown Brewery opens every day at 11 a.m. TU fans, football season is here, and the Golden Hurricane has one of the best home schedules in school history. Season tickets are on sale now, or purchase our three-game mini plan. The plan includes in-state rival Oklahoma State, along with Navy on Military Appreciation Game, and two-time defending league champion UCF, all for only $90. To get your tickets, call 918-631-GO-TU or visit TulsaHurricane.com forward slash tickets. At Rogers State University, we keep things personal. It all starts here. We make sure our graduates get the most out of their education. RSU has campuses in Claremore, Bartlesville, and Pryor, with on-campus housing and a wide variety of programs to suit your needs. It all starts here. Rogers State University. Gene Barrett joins us now on Oklahoma Sports Scene. Gene is a here was a Tulsa football star back in the uh, 70s, early 70s. <laughs> then went on to a great NFL career, nine seasons with the San Francisco 49ers. Had a big impact on the 49ers because after you left, yeah, they, they won the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just as soon as I left. And you laid the foundation though, right, Gene? <laughs> yeah, well, I, uh, I'd like to say I played two years with Joe Montana and yeah. taught him everything he knew. And, there you go, you know, yeah, absolutely. Well, so, you're, You've been really active heading up the NFL alumni group here. 
in this area. Talk about some of the guys involved and what you've been trying to do with that group. Well, yeah, I've, I've been involved with the NFL Players Association. Uh, you know, it's one of those deals where you get involved and then as soon as you get involved, they make you president. And <laughs> all that means yeah. is you're willing to do all the work. Yeah. But uh, no, we, we have put together a golf tournament fundraising event we call the Kickoff Classic. We have it out at the Hard Rock every year. And I can't say enough about the, the Cherokee Nation and the people at the Hard Rock. They just treat us so special. But it's, uh, it's September 8th is our dinner and auction. Still have room for some people to come out. Yeah. We'll have some sports memorabilia. And we're, then on September 9th, we have the golf tournament at the Cherokee Hills. And we're raising money for Oklahoma underfunded high school athletic programs. And I don't know if you happen to see the, the article in the Tulsa World right. yesterday. Article, yeah. It sold, it just told the whole story yeah. right there. And it's great timing, but Tulsa World is one of our sponsors. Uh, One, uh, One Oak is one of our sponsors. Of course, I work with First Oklahoma Bank and they're a major sponsor. So. We're, you know, all our guys come together. We'll have about 40 in town for the event. Nice. It's a celebrity event. Uh, so we'll have a, a celebrity seated at every dinner table. We'll have a celebrity on every golf team. Wow. Now, I can't guarantee they'll help your score any, but <laughs> a couple of the guys, uh, Steve Largent will be there. I think he's a pretty good golfer. Yeah. Joe Washington's pretty good. Tony Peters is pretty good. Tony Peters will be back. Uh, Billy Sims, uh, maybe not so much, but everybody loves to play with him. I know you're happy because this group really helps well, out your programs, Gil. Uh, Gene and, and the group have been so uh, really accommodating for our schools the last two years. It's been uh, something that they look forward to because those are funds that they can't count on year to year. And to get something like that is like a bonus because they are able to buy some of the things that they can't. All of our schools, are on gate receipts. You make it, you take it. Yeah. And if you don't make it, you don't take it. And that's why we have to, in the central office, uh, raise as much money as we do to supplement that. But when it comes to the Players Association, they've been fabulous for our school. Gene, what, what, are, your, what are your goals? What do you hope to raise to pass on to the high school programs? Well, our, our goal is to raise $50,000. Now, that's kind of a lofty goal. I'm, I don't know whether we can get there or not. It's just all about the, the attendance on Sunday night, uh, the number of people that come out to play golf with us, and with the commitment that the Cherokee Nation and some of our other sponsors have given us, uh, you know, we're in this thing for the long haul. That's good. Uh, we, the Tulsa World's done a fabulous job helping us to promote it this year, which they weren't with us last year. Uh, I got to say thank you to you all for helping yeah. us to promote yeah. it. Yeah. I know you had Steve August on right. yeah. last month yeah. and, and Steve, Steve's been involved for a long time. So it's, we've got over a, a hundred former NFL players in Oklahoma wow. and the money doesn't just go to Tulsa. We, we send some to Oklahoma city right. uh, yeah. and some of the outlying communities. Uh, you'll see coach uh, Davis from Miami is one of the schools and Coach Tennyson from Beggs is going to be at the event. They're both going to say a couple of words about <clears throat> what what it means to their programs. That, like you say, they have that little extra. You know, we d we developed uh, a, a a application yeah, for schools yeah. to fill out last year, Gene and I, and uh, so we can isolate and determine the schools right. that really have that need. Uh, you know, for additional funds, and it's it's acute across the state of Oklahoma. I'm telling you, there, there yeah. are schools that are trying to provide a quality athletic program on very few dollars. James, we give you your gift card from Bricktown here. Give us the number where people can call to get tickets for the gala. Saturday night's number 8th. Then you have a golf team put together. Give them a call. Get involved with that golf tournament at Cherokee Hills on September 9th, Monday. Yeah, thank you. I, actually, you can call. Just call my cell phone. <laughs> Everybody else does. Yeah, it's 918-629-7633. Uh, and we'll take care of you. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you very you, much. Gene. Appreciate it. You bet. Thank we'll you. come back with our Remington Race Report and our parting shots. So stay right there with us on Oklahoma Sports Scene. The need is great. Many Oklahoma high schools struggle to keep sports programs afloat. State and district funding is severely lacking, and many families are tapped out too. Go, go, go. 
when you have 88% of your kids on free and reduced lunch, that's district-wide. That speaks volumes as to the availability of outside funding. So we have to look at every means that we can to get there. You can make a difference by joining dozens of former NFL players at the Kickoff Classic Charity Gala and Golf Tournament, supported by the Oklahoma chapter of the NFL Players Association. It's an annual benefit to provide the basics, like helmets and jerseys, for underfunded high school sports programs in Oklahoma. Save the dates, September 8th and 9th, at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino and Cherokee Hills Golf Course. For ticket and event details, visit twdigitalstrategy.com slash kickoffclassic. The Remington Park Thoroughbred Race Season opened this past week, and they had their first big stakes event. To wrap it all up, the voice of Remington Park, here's our friend, Dale Day. The 2019 Thoroughbred Season now underway at Remington Park. The main event on opening night was the $175,000 Governor's Cup. Popularity went off as the wagering favored at 3-2 to two odds and had the rail. Defending Governor's Cup champ, Hence, was in post 3, with Millionaire looking at Lee in post 4. Cita Rojo broke from post number five, trying to extend a stakes winning streak. They're off in the Governor's Cup. Poor start for looking at Lee, catching air at the start at the back, but he comes from the back normally anyway. Popularity out front early, pressured by Limation. That pair getting clear of Mosita Rojo by almost three lengths as they pass the line first time. Believe in Royalty is on the gas, moving up fourth. A gap of six then, back to looking at Lee, and hence is the trailer. 12 from the front, into the clubhouse turn. Up front, Limation showing the way by a neck over popularity. Mosita Rojo on even turns with Believe in Royalty in the second flight. That second pair, six clear of looking at Lee, a length and a half better than the trailing hence opening quarter in 23.99 seconds as they go to the back stretch. On the lead, popularity now by a half length over Limation, changing spots there as they straighten away. Believe in Royalty the gray, feisty in third, running along two and a half back. Four more then to Mesita Rojo, looking at Lee and Hentz, both starting to pick things up a bit. They still trail together. Midway up the back stretch, the half mile of 48.54 seconds with a half mile to go, and popularity is there still by a quarter length. Limation not going away, strong on the outside. Believe in Royalty is third, three back as they go to the turn. Mesita Rojo has picked things up in fourth on the Merlant, on and gaining ground, and now at the rail, three furlongs left, both Hentz and looking at Lee gathering together. They're only five back as they bunch up in the far turn. Popularity there by almost a full length now with a quarter mile left, three, for, three quarters in a minute, 12.96 seconds. It's popularity first of the stretch. Outside then to Limation, Mesita Rojo is third. Gaining ground at the rail is Hentz. Looking at Lee and believe in royalty seem to be done. Furlong to go in the Governor's Cup. Popularity has the advantage. Here comes Mesita Rojo gaining ground with every stride at 16th left. Popularity is all out. Mesita Rojo grabs the lead. Mesita Rojo will take the Governor's Cup and make it four consecutive stakes wins. Mesita Rojo has plenty of time between races and it appears to work as he has won four consecutive stakes events for owner Wayne Davis of Plain Dealer, Louisiana and trainer Shane Wilson. Jackie Gerard Melanson was up. Helping to present the hardware for the Governor's Cup was the Honorable Governor of Oklahoma, Kevin Stitt. Mesita Rojo paid $5.40 to win as the second betting favorite. Popularity was second with Limation third. The Remington Park thoroughbred season now moves into a regular Wednesday through Saturday night schedule. First race is normally at 7 p.m. Plenty of time to come out as the season rolls on through December 15th. At Remington Park in Oklahoma City, I'm Dale Day. Now back to Sports Scene. And as always at Remington Park, free parking, free admission, racing Wednesday through Sunday, post time, 7 p.m. Parting shots, Coach Cloud leads us off. You know, uh, I want to congratulate the PGA. I think they've got it right, where they build to a crescendo at the end of the season. And what a crescendo, $15 million to the winner. Congratulations, Roy McElroy. That's fantastic. <laughs> but then you look down on the sports page and you see the LPGA champion just won $295,000. Something's wrong with that. We need to do a little bit better for our female golfers than we do for our male golfers. I know there's disparity and I know they don't have to worry about Title IX like we do. However, we need to get it just a little bit closer to make it a little bit more important for those female golfers. Well, we've kicked off the 150th season of college football. September 8th, we'll kick off the 100th season of the National Football League. 
We also have one of the major sporting events in this country. Just starting for the next two weeks, the run at the uh, Flushing Meadows at, uh, outside New York City, home of the United States Open Tennis Championships. For the American tennis fan, the headliner certainly has been Serena Williams. She is age 38, going for a record tying 38th major win in her incredible career. She's also trying for a seventh, has seven U.S. Open wins. She'll try for number eight. She's now ranked eighth in the world, and only two other American players, though, are even ranked uh, among the top ten. Now, what's happened to our American men tennis players? It's been 15 years since Andy Riddick was the last U.S. player to win our national championship. We haven't won Wimbledon since Pete Sampras. That was back in 2000. And the last American to win the Australian Open was Andre Agassi. That was 19, 2003. Agassi also the last to win the French Open. That was back in 1999. Currently, only 25 American male players are listed in the men's top 200 ATP rankings. American professional players really need to step up their game. All right, Coach, coming up next week, we have on the show scheduled Barry Lewis. Right after Labor Day, we'll be talking about our very first Oklahoma Prep Coach and Player of the Month with the new sponsor, our good friends, Don Carlton. Don Hunter. Carlton, we're glad they came in, and, and that's going to be really exciting because we have a lot of zero weight games right. already, and we can be able to highlight those coaches and those student athletes. T.J. Eckert uh, does a great job at KTL Sports, a weekend reporter, as well as uh, helping out uh, Ryan Brasher there at uh, Channel 8. He'll be here to talk about some of their coverage for the season, and uh, goes, he's also been very busy as a former Bixby quarterback, too, well-known in this area. How exciting is it to have someone actually covering the games that has name recognition in the area right. because he was a good quarterback in high school. And Mike Malinga is going to be here to, we hope, talk about the Tulsa Drillers and the Texas League Playoffs. Of course, they can't take this away that we are still are the defending Texas League champions. That's right. They have the trophy in the rings. <laughs> That's all you need, the trophy in the rings. But uh, we're excited for them, and hopefully they end up the season on a positive note. They had, went into this week with a two-game lead on Arkansas in the North Division. That's for the second half championship. But they end with all their games on the road, Coach, with trips to Amarillo and then Corpus Christi. And we'll have to wait and see how it shakes out to see if we'll have some more games at One Oak Field where they've had an incredible season, set more attendance records. You know, if they can just get to the playoffs, I think they have a chance because yeah. they have some pretty good pitching. And I think that the Dodgers have done a really good job with them uh, to keep players in there. And, and how it's exciting for them to have the parent club – one of the best two teams in the major leagues. And, of course, yeah. the Yankees and the Dodgers played last weekend as the two winningest teams in the major leagues. Well, I'm heading down to Texas to follow the Union Redskins and do the football uh, radio show for them. That'll be on 7 p.m. on Friday night. We'll be down there in Mansfield, Texas, and take the Union Redskins to their kickoff opener. A lot of high school games here. And then, of course, Friday night, we can just sit back, relax, leave it on Fox Sports 1, and there is... Tulsa at 6 o'clock at Michigan State, and at 9.30, it's Oklahoma State at Oregon State. Well, I'll be home from east side That's right. <laughs> the, the, with the uh, Hale and Webster game to see that uh, Oklahoma State game. And, of course, then on Sunday, it's the big one. Dana comes back. That's right. Yeah, all of a sudden, the Houston Cougars come to OU to play in that nationally televised game exclusively on ABC. So they have the entire stage to themselves. Hope you join our Oklahoma sports team. Be sure to join us next week to give you the complete story of Oklahoma sports from Tulsa, Oklahoma City, everywhere in between. Again, thanks for being with us at the Brick Town Brewery Restaurant here in South Tulsa. We'll see you next time on Oklahoma Sports Scene.